welcome to a time with the SL. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, King of glory, we adore your name. We glorify you. It is through your will that we are alive and we are healthy today. Your grace has allowed us to converge together. You have promised that whenever we call on your name, you will hear us and you will answer us. So this evening, Lord, we ask you to come into our midst and have fellowship with us. Make your blessings abundant and grace us with your presence. From the start of this meeting to the end, glorify yourself and accept our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. So today we are looking at three Bible stories of impatience and the lessons learned. Of course, we are still in our series about Bible characters and lessons we learn from their lives. Amen. So, I think this particular topic is of interest to everybody because since impatience is, I believe, something we all struggle with. It comes as no surprise that you would find people in the Bible who were impatient as well. So this evening I'm sharing three stories of impatience and a key lesson that we can learn from each one. So there are many lessons to learn, but I'm just going to pick one key lesson from these three different stories. And the first one we are going to look at, Abraham and Sarah, the story of Abraham and Sarah. Generally, they are a model couple, you must admit. They had a good marriage. They understood each other. But their impatience when it came to having a child shows us how rushing a process can lead to untold stress and rancor. Remember, God had blessed Abraham and promised to make him great. He said, I will make a great nation of you. But all the promises of God, they clearly would have seemed insignificant to Abraham in light of the fact that he had no child. Abraham did not have a child. At that time, he was called Abram. Genesis 15, 2-3 tells us, when Abram spoke to God, he said, O sovereign God, what good are all your blessings when I don't even have a son? Since you've given me no children, Eliezer of Damascus, a servant in my household, will inherit all my wealth. You have given me no descendants of my own, so one of my servants will be my heir. And God responded pretty much immediately, and he said to him, Genesis 15, 4, No, your servant will not be your heir. For you will have a son of your own who will be your heir. Amen. Now, at that point, Abraham and Sarah, they had a promise to hold on to. And then they began to wait. But as they got older, it seemed more unlikely that they would have a child of their own. Mm. In their impatience, they concluded Maybe it is through another woman that this promised child is going to come. Don't go to Egypt. Too. Don't go back to your old ways. Because that thing that was waiting to deal with you, that did not deal with you before, is still there in Egypt waiting to deal with you. It was when they went to Egypt that they brought back that young girl, that slave girl, Hagar. They brought her back into the home. That is where we see the story taking a turn. Abraham slept with Sarah's servant, Hagar. Hagar was a servant. She was not his wife. She was not his concubine. She was simply a servant. The Bible tells us that Hagar conceived. The minute that child was born, that started stress and strife in the household. 
for Abraham and Sarah. Bible tells us that Hagar began to despise her madam, Sarah. <laughs> A servant too, that they brought back from Egypt. And of course, Sarah began to cast blame on Abraham for her misery. See what you have allowed to happen now. The Bible tells us, as time went by, Abraham did have a child through Sarah, as God intended and as God promised. But the deed had already been done. In their impatience, they brought on to themselves stress. They were on a certain path to what God had promised for them. But, what do we call it? Mistake. Remember what we said about mistakes? Mistakes come about through making wrong decisions. It was Abraham's mistake and it was Sarah's mistake. They both messed up big time. They messed up big time. Abraham and Sarah. Very, very unfortunate story. You know why? Till today, they are still fighting that fight. Do you know that? That stress that entered the house of Abraham and Sarah, till today, that fight, they are still fighting it. <laughs> so what is the key lesson from Abraham and Sarah's impatience? Do you know what impatience is? Impatience is a fruit. Oh. Are you aware? Impatience is the fruit of a lack of faith. Every time we are impatient, fruit is going to come out. It's just that that fruit will be difficult for someone to eat. God promised them a child. But as they got older, they began to see it as impossible. So they tried it their own way. So this evening, please let us all swallow small sense. Whether it is a child, as in the case of Abraham and Sarah, or any promise that God has made to you, Remember that God's timing is best and believe that God will follow through. Not waiting and taking matters into your own hands causes us to rush the process. The end result will always be stress. Story number one. Let's go to story number two. Ah, the children of Israel. <laughs> the Israelites were impatient with Moses. I learned something about the relationship God has with the Israelites. You see, God chose the Israelites to be a blessing to other nations. They were blessed too, but they were blessed as a nation. Each of them as individuals had a lot of work to do. One of the things that they needed to learn individually was that of patience. Patience. In particular, there's a story. Every time I, you know, I try to understand the genesis of this story because it was just bad. Their impatience caused them to do something which was so terrible in the sight of God that God wanted to kill all of them. 
God wanted to kill all of them. Let's look at the story of the golden calf. The golden calf. Many of us are already familiar with the story, so I don't need to go into it. You can find that in Exodus 32. Moses, their leader at that time, had climbed up Mount Sinai. He was speaking with God. And as far as the children of Israel were concerned, Moses was taking too long on the mountain. So, you remember Moses said to God that he needed someone to help him. That he cannot do this, go on this errand by himself. Hmm. That person that Moses added to the mandate that God gave him, Aaron. Remember, his brother. The children of Israel then approached Aaron. Exodus 31, 32, 1. Come, make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses, who brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. When they were crossing the Red Sea, they crossed. When those plagues were happening, they knew who Moses was. When they were collecting a ring and necklace from the Egyptian neighbors, they knew who Moses was. The Bible tells us that it seemed like Aaron was sensing their impatience. He gave in to their request. He told them to bring their earrings. He made them an idol in the form of a golden calf. Where did that idea come from to Aaron anyway? <laughs> there are sometimes I speak to some sisters. When they have made the blunder of their life, they will now tell me, Essel, do you know, there was one pastor, I gave the pastor X, Y, Z. I said, he didn't give us in the rebirth. The person has run away with your money now. <laughs> you have been duped. <laughs> hey. So they made this golden calf. God was so angry with them. God was ready to kill all of them. Thankfully, the Bible tells us that Moses interceded and said God should have mercy. Moses convinced God to relent from his anger. But in the end, they were still punished. They were still punished. They were still punished. You know, a lot of the time, we think that because you have begged God for forgiveness, that that means that you are exempt from the consequences of your actions. <laughs> About 3,000 of them died simply because of actions stemming from impatience. You can see this in Genesis 32, verse 28. So what's the key lesson from the Israelites' impatience? I would say Impatience can cause you to seek inferior substitutes. You start looking for what is not lost. They tell you to do all manner of things, you start doing those things. In the case of the Israelites, Moses' delay led them to find an idol to worship instead. All the rubbish they were, that they had picked up from Egypt. There are times we find ourselves doing similar things because we are impatient. I've had people tell me, if God doesn't answer me, I'm just going to go back and do X, Y, Z. I said, go now. Who is it going to affect? It's not going to affect God. We may go back to our old way of living when you don't experience the benefits of being a citizen of God's kingdom soon enough. I've had sisters, especially the sisters, they will tell me, SL, I've tried. SL, I've tried. God sees my heart. God sees my heart. 
I know what I, I know what I can do, but I'm not, I said go and do. You know what you can do? Go and do it now. Because you have, you have, you have to stop doing it. I remember one sister. She was working in a in an office. She kept on complaining to me. Other people are giving testimonies. They are being promoted. Said, Other people are giving testimonies. I said, I've not worked in this place for up to one year. Please, am I wrong? I, do, do they promote you in one year? Is it normal for you to be promoted the year they, you start work? They had just, in fact, they had just confirmed the sister. She said, other people. But I said, other people give testimonies that they are promoted. She complained and complained. I said, I should have just stayed in my other job. And why she was saying that? Because I was the one that said she should leave the other job to get this job. She said, eh, the conditions of service were not good. The this were not good. But SL, I know that I would have been there for longer. So they would have promoted me. A promotion was coming. A promotion was coming. I said, but if you complain about your other job all the time. You know what she said to me? You know what she said? She said she has actually started talking to her former employer. Remember, this former, they are not paying her on time. Though. They were keeping them long hours. Though. It was a horrible place to work. But simply because in her new place of work, she had not been promoted, where she worked for only one year and had just been confirmed. So, I begged her. I said, please, just be patient. Just give God a bit of time. Just wait till the year is over. Just wait till the year is over. Before you, you leave and go back to Egypt. Before that week was over, she was promoted. Today, her former place of work no longer exists. They have gone bust. So, beware of letting impatience cause you to settle for less. Now, another story we are going to look at. I'm going to look at another story. And this is a very sad one. It's a very sad one. A very, very sad story. The story of Amon and Tamar. And this particular story is, it tells, it's an example of how your impatience may negatively impact the life of another person. The story of Ammon and Tamar is found in 2 Samuel 13. Don't be surprised. They were not the same mother. So they had, people used to marry brothers, you could marry sisters in the Bible. Don't ask me, oh, don't know. They are not the same. They are doing it. They are doing it. It's not right. It's not right. But Ammon was in love with Tamar. She was his brother, Absalom's sister. So she was his half sister. Based on some wicked, bad advice that Ammon received, because he did not have peace. See what lost does. He devised a plan to get him and his sister alone so he could sleep with her. He pretended to be sick. You're going to read that in 2 Samuel 13, 11. I, in fact, I hate the story. I don't like it at all. He requested for his sister to serve him. When, he came, when the sister entered the room, he grabbed her and said, come and lie down with me. Come to bed with me. Of course, Tamar knew what it was. He wanted to have sex with her. And she said, my brother, don't force me. I will go and meet our father that you want to marry me. The king will not say no. Please, don't do this thing that is despicable. But the devil lost everything had come together. 
and he raped her. After he raped her, they said he started to hate her because she was no longer of value to him. Second Samuel 13, 20 tells us that Tamar lived in her brother Absalom's house, a desolate woman. And of course, we all know the story. At the end of the day, Absalom killed Amon. Tamar didn't need to go through that pain. It was just the height of wickedness. The height of wickedness. And so a key lesson from Ammon's impatience is that our impatience can negatively impact the life of another person. One, just once, he slept with her, just once, that one-time action affected Tamar for the rest of her life. And of course, we know what happened after that. Wahala, 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 trouble, trouble, trouble. We see similar consequences of impatience happening today. You know, I've had people tell me it only happened once. And it's only once. You know, it's like traffic. People rushing to get to their destination. Speeding. Accident. Cause someone to die. Cause someone to be disabled. Just because they were in a hurry. People's impatience with success leads them to exploit other people. So many. What impatience causes. It's a terrible spirit. We've learned today that impatience is a fruit of a lack of faith. Let us pray. Our Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for this word we've heard this evening. Father, we thank you for the Holy Spirit who helps us develop and exercise patience. Patience is a fruit of the Spirit. Our Lord and our God, the grace to never forget that the end of a matter is better than its beginning and patience is better than pride. And so, Lord, we are praying this evening that we're able to resist the temptation to be quickly provoked in our spirit because we know that anger resides in the lap of fools. Father, we pray, we desire to live wisely. We desire to live with a due sense of responsibility. We want to live as people that know the meaning and the purpose of life and we respect it in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we want to purpose to make the best use of time. Father, we will not be procrastinators. We do the right thing at the right time. Father, even though these days are difficult, Lord Father, that we will not try to rush ahead of God. And Father, we choose to count it all joy when we fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of our faith produces patience. And Lord and our God, we realize that many of the challenges we are facing they have just come to test our faith and to produce in us the quality of endurance. And Father, we will endure. So Father, the grace to purpose, to allow this process to go on until that endurance is fully developed in our lives. Father, our prayer is that we become that person of mature character with the right sort of independence, not independence from you, Lord, but independence from things of this world in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, your grace, your favor, and your loving kindness, and your mercy, they are enough for us, Lord. Father, they are sufficient for us, Lord. 
sufficient against any danger that makes us know that we will bear trouble manfully in the mighty name of Jesus. Why? Because your strength and power are made perfect. They are fulfilled and they are completed. Show themselves most effectively in our weaknesses. And so, Lord, we thank you. And Father, if by any chance we find ourselves in this process of waiting, if we don't know how to meet a particular problem, Father, you have said that we should ask you. We should ask you. Ask you for wisdom. And you give this wisdom generously. You don't make us feel guilty. And so we know when we ask you, Lord, the necessary wisdom we need to go through whatever challenge, whatever process will be given to us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, and it leads to transformation in us. It leads to a wonderful transformation in us, Lord. And as we live this new life, our prayer, Lord, is that we will be strengthened from your glorious power so that whatever situation or challenges we are going through, whatever experiences, we will endure those experiences with joy. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And so, faithful Father, we thank you for hearing our prayers today. We thank you for feeding us with your word. We thank you for encouraging us even as we have gathered. Take our lives, Lord Father, and use us to love and serve you and to serve others. In the power of your spirit and in the name of your son. Father, thank you because we are created by your power, we are redeemed by your love. And we are strengthened by your spirit. Father, we give ourselves into your service. May we love you and love others with all our hearts. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. We thank God for his kindness to us. Look forward to as many of you who are going to participate in our next program, Raising Praying Mothers, which is going to start at 8 o'clock on YouTube. We are starting a series on the battle of 2024. Our first in the series is Know Your Opponent. Look forward to seeing you later at 8. Remain lifted in God's presence always. Amen.